distinguished guests, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Technovation, an event that celebrates the power of renewable energy in preserving our beloved planet. Today, we all are gathered here to embark on a journey to inspire change, foster innovation, and lead the way towards a sustainable future with Gruner Renewable Energy and Bioenergy Germany. To begin with, first and foremost, we would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all the media personnel who have flown from different parts of the country, such as Delhi and Chennai, and in fact our regional media from Nagpur, to joining us here today and covering this event. And a big thanks to all our valued clients and attendees who have joined us here on a Saturday morning. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. Let's have a big round of applause for them. Thank you. We are honored by your presence and support. I am Namrata Sahirawat and I am delighted to be your host for this day. We would like to commence by invoking the God Almighty and taking the blessings of Ma Saraswati. So I would request our dignitaries to please come forward and light the auspicious lamp. Let's have prosperity. So we are seeking the blessings from God, from Ma Saraswati, for all our future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we are lighting the auspicious lamp. Light this lamp together because we all are in this journey together as one team. The, the journey of an ecologically sound future for all our future generations. Yes, let's not hold back on the claps. I guess we all can feel the claps rolling. Thank you. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. And the urgency to save our planet has never been greater. We are witnessing the alarming effects of global warming, rise in sea levels, and extreme weather events that calls for immediate action. So it is time for all of us to come together and work together towards a more sustainable and a resilient future. Well, thankfully, several initiatives are already in motion to combat the effects of climate change and achieve sustainability, such as Paris Climate Agreement, which is a landmark pact that unites several countries to come together and limit global warming and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There are Sustainable Development Goals, we have 17 SDGs by United Nations, which focuses on clean energy, affordable and clean water, and also responsible production as well as consumption. And if we come closer to India, we are inspired from the visionary leaders such as Sri Nitin Gadkari ji, whose mission envisions a clean energy-based economy for India. His relentless pursuit of cleaner fuels, sustainable transportation, and renewable energy has inspired people from across the world. And we could not be more proud to host this event in his city of Nagpur. This event is being organized by an organization that embodies the spirit of sustainable innovation, which is Gruner Renewable Energy. India's first company to build a Napier grass-based plant. Joining hands today with them is Bioenergy Germany which has more than 20 years of experience in construction and operation of biogas plants worldwide. So far, they have been involved in more than 300 projects. They have their footprint in 12 countries. And we are so proud to announce that the 13th one is going to be none other than our very own incredible India. We are truly grateful for this collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And now, 
we will take this step further by understanding that how Gruner Renewable Energy is contributing towards making our future ecologically sound with environmentally friendly energy initiatives and strategies. And now to help us delve into that conversation, I would like to call the brains behind Gruner. The man who is extremely passionate for environmental advocacy. And he has a drive to offer some really groundbreaking sustainable energy solutions. He has a mission to revolutionize the entire renewable energy landscape. So please join me in welcoming with a rousing round of applause on stage, Mr. Utkarsh Gupta, founder and CEO of Kuna Renewable Energy. A very warm welcome to you. I am really thankful for all of you coming uh, uh, for this event and uh, I would also like the uh, Bioenergy team, this Dr. Andres Strassman, Samadhi, Mr. Dirk Simon for being here in India to be with us, to support us in transforming the uh, India and making it a green economy. So as uh, Namrata has rightly said that we are at a uh, mission of uh, creating a green economy. Uh, you would be surprised to know that India uh, is uh, the 15th country uh, in the world which is uh, the largest importer of the gas. So this is what we want to uh, uh, do with our biogas uh, plants to reduce this uh, imports of India. This obviously will help in developing the uh, economy. It will help in growing the economy. Where in India we see that uh, most of the uh, 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 people come from 68% uh, uh, population lies in the villages. Uh, so India is an agriculture based economy. So when we say it's 68% uh, population lies in the villages uh, or agriculture based economy. So this obviously gives us an opportunity that uh, we always can explore opportunity to uh, become an uh, exporter of uh, gas by converting this agricultural waste into energy. So uh, this is what we are trying to do out here in India. So uh, as a company, we have a vision that we want to create an infrastructure for CNG uh, in India. The biggest problem was uh, with the CNG, which uh, made it limited only to uh, big cities, was the transportation of the gas and uh, making it available in the local uh, uh, cities, small cities, uh, that's a big problem, uh, that's the transportation. Uh, having said that, if we have a biogas as a source uh, and we convert the biogas into the bio CNG, we always have a better uh, infrastructure uh, which we can develop in, the, in India. And uh, this will not only help us in developing uh, the uh, infrastructure, but it al also will help in improving the lives of the people living in villages. So you see that there are uh, farmers who always uh, uh, struggle to sell their produce in spite of the hard work they are doing. So people like us, uh, 40,000, 50,000 is a very small amount. But for a farmers, there is, uh, that is their uh, annual income. So you, this is, uh, with this uh, amount, uh, you, can you, I would imagine that you can uh, run for entire year uh, along with your family to live for and also to uh, uh, put some uh, investment on the on the farms no it's not possible but with the, when there is a biogas as a solution uh, if you have a biogas plants uh, in these places then obviously these uh, uh, farmers these villagers obviously get some opportunity to sell their uh, uh, by waste from the feeds uh, uh, farmlands or they convert their uh, land to grow neighbor grass as a feed stock which is a very good source for uh, a generation of uh, biogas. Apparently this grass has become uh, very much popular. Uh, apart from other feed stocks which we are uh, building plants on, uh, we want to emphasize on uh, neighbor grass as a feed stock because if the biogas plant the biggest challenge is the raw material availability. And the cost of the raw material which uh, you can uh, use for your plant. Uh, what happens is, uh, uh, I just was reading an article uh, a week back. So uh, there was a transition in the UP government, Uttar Pradesh government, wherein uh, uh, UP government was the first one to uh, go against neighbor gas uh, to be uh, used as a feedstock for a biogas plant. 
uh, because they, they thought that it, it is not uh, going to be a better source, uh, it is not going to reduce the carbon emissions. But uh, off late, when they have saw that there is a lot of plants coming up, so they have immediately converted their uh, uh, statement and now uh, in the month of June they have issued a uh, government order wherein they are stating that Nepal, uh, everyone should uh, not go on a press mud or bagas or uh, agriculture base as a feed stock, only feed stock. That once uh, the company see or a supplier of the bio, uh, biomass sees that you are dependent on that particular feed stock, the price is getting increased. So when the price is getting increased, the, the profitability of your plant obviously it at a risk. So there is a price we have to also see uh, for the uh, uh, securing the raw material as uh, uh, for running the biogas plant. So this is a very very big challenge uh, to set up the biogas plant. That is why uh, most of the people uh, in India are going forward for uh, setting up the biogas plants on eBay gas. While I am mentioning about the EPA gas as a plant, I would also like to thank Mr. Achal Thul who trusted us. Uh, we are a very new company, we are just 5 months old company. So uh, he trusted us, uh, he showed his full trust and we always try to uh, deliver uh, more than what we have committed to him. So to deliver the best of the plant, uh, best of the technology, uh, uh, so, so that uh, the best output can come uh, from this plant. So he can obviously, uh, uh, he is a witness of uh, what uh, we have offered him and what we are delivering. Uh, the component wise, technology wise, everything is what we uh, didn't even charge for. So we are very much transparent as a company. So uh, we always uh, see that there is a big problem in India uh, that the people does not uh, 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 the uh, people think that biogas being a booming industry, it is a good industry to move into and earn money uh, in a short term basis. But that is wrong, this is uh, uh, obviously uh, hampering the industry growth. So uh, we as a company, we feel very much responsible. We think that uh, if uh, we deliver the quality plants with the, with the right technology, with the full transparency with the client, then obviously we can transform the industry. So I am a firm believer that any uh, big industrialist who has become this big, so they always have got some opportunity. So it is up to you uh, how you take up that opportunity. So we as a company, we see this as a big opportunity. That is why we are so much transparent and uh, we are so much focused on the quality delivery of the plant. And for this we also uh, uh, cannot say that we are experts on biogas, to be honest. Yes, we are using, uh, new, so obviously having, uh, if we say that we are experts, it would be wrong. So for this, we uh, thought that it's better to uh, go and reach out uh, to person or company who always already has an expertise in a biogas. So for this, uh, I was looking after uh, what, uh, which is the country who has uh, the big potential uh, of the biogas. And I found out that Germany is the best country in the world which has uh, over 9000 biogas plant at the commercial level. So then uh, I, it, it was uh, to my luck that I reached out to Mr. Uh, Nils Rothman uh, who is uh, MD of uh, Bioenergy uh, Germany uh, for Southeast Asia. So uh, we were speaking to him uh, about the problems and the challenges which we see uh, in India uh, why biogas plants are not being run properly why why the plants are getting closed day by day. So this is the big challenge we see. So whereas uh, Bioenergy Germany which is already managing over 300 plus plants, they are uh, having over 95% success rate in the, in the plant or they are managing. So why uh, they can do it, so why India cannot do it? So we as a company, uh, we, uh, we, uh, want, we are using their uh, engineering designs and the technology. Uh, which we are implementing uh, to, uh, to our best of our uh, knowledge and expertise so that we can obviously offer and deliver the best of the plant. Because uh, if, you, if uh, many of you would have seen a biogas plant by their eyes, a uh, live plant running in India, but the problem uh, uh, is that most of the people think that it's so easy, it's such a small process. 
anyone can go and uh, uh, set up the plant. People think that setting up a digester is nothing. It's a round shape, uh, it's, uh, this thing. So it's not uh, that easy. There is a very uh, a tough science which is required uh, because what is happening inside a digester is it's uh, it's like your stomach. Whatever you eat, so uh, it goes into your body. Sometimes it does not goes well, so you have a upset tummy. So for if that is the reason, the, if we don't feed uh, properly into the digesters, if you don't know the, what is the schedule we have to follow for the feeding, at what duration, and uh, at what uh, 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 chemical reactions we have to manage, then obviously this is a big problem. So for this, uh, Bioenergy Germany is uh, guiding us uh, to obviously deliver the best uh, uh, feeding processes as well apart from the engineering design. So they are masters of it. Uh, so that is why we uh, are uh, working together now. And I am very proud uh, to be a part of uh, Bioenergy Germany to obviously uh, transform the Indian market. So I was talking about the opportunity. So opportunity is that. So if I don't go uh, as, a, as a, a responsible company and I go with a company, I don't want to name the companies, just go and just sell anything, it won't work. Uh, it, won't work. it will last for a very short time. So we as a company, we always want that we all want to make a big dent in the uh, uh, market by transforming it. So we, uh, at the same time, we are offering the best technology available, uh, the best quality plants, with the best, uh, best components, the uh, German components, which obviously has a good experience on running a biogas plant. At the same time, we always ensure that the cost, which is a big factor of setting up the biogas plant, is also controlled. So why we talk about the cost as a big factor, apart from these two things, is that what happens in the in the industry is that many companies who does not have a good expertise uh, experience in the biogas and this is not wrong why they don't have the experience is that this industry is very new this industry is just rising up so uh, they don't have that experience they don't have, don't have uh, they, they didn't have spent time on the r d of setting up the biogas plant so we uh, always see this as a responsibility uh, our responsibility so we always think, uh, I used to talk with my senior advisor, Mr. Anil Dusa, so who is uh, uh, basically uh, not available here for this event, but he is uh, desperately asking for uh, me to arrange some uh, live video or do some video recording and send him, send him across. He is apparently in the US, uh, but he is the father of biogas uh, in India, you can say. Since 1978, this gentleman has been working into this industry. Uh, and working very hard and being a bureaucrat you always uh, know how bureaucrats work someone uh, some bureaucrats obviously don't work they just sit in their office but he was a kind of bureaucrat we used to work very hard because uh, in spite of coming from the iit Roorkee, he had multiple opportunities to earn mon uh, multiple uh, with packages in different companies going to places outside india also he got multiple offers but he always wanted to worked very hard for the biogas industry. All the biofuel policies what we have seen is has come up was obviously formulated by him. He was the person who was represented India to the world. So uh, I am really grateful uh, that uh, uh, I have got him as my chief advisor uh, to guide him, uh, guide me, guide my people, guide my team uh, to help me choose the right uh, uh, technology, right components to deliver the right uh, uh, plants. So I am really much with thankful for, uh, uh, for him uh, as a, as a uh, chief advisor. So I would also uh, like to uh, uh, mention something about uh, uh, some few challenges, uh, what people does not follow and what ruler is following, why ruler is different apart from the quality and, and uh, the cost effectiveness and uh, other things uh, to mention, but there are certain things which most other companies does not follow. You would have seen that companies who are setting up the biogas plant, they does not follow the safety standards, which is a very, very important thing. 
so they always miss out on the, some uh, some things some small things even for uh, fire fire safety measures they don't follow properly they just get the nocs from the officials and just to save on the money uh, they charge on the client but to say fill their pockets say just go out and uh, deliver the plant without following these safety standards whereas gruner at gruner we always follow these safety standards and thanks to biology again for helping us in uh, doing the uh, planning of and the designing of the biogas plant in a way that it uh, helps us to follow even the minute thing i mean the nano uh, macro nano thing also they help us in uh, uh, in knowing and uh, covering that while designing the plant which obviously i mean uh, uh, to our surprise most of the vendors uh, does not know what why these informations are ready we have been facing uh, this problem while we are designing the plant or essential tool so this is a big uh, big big problem uh, which is there uh, and we are here to solve this apart from this we also see that uh, uh, like we are where we are setting the plant for sethpur it's a village it's in lasanpur uh, if uh, few of the, you would be traveling tomorrow to the uh, site visit you will see that uh, it's a barren land you won't be finding a good manpower to run the plant the operator who is going to run the plant so how can you uh, put uh, the uh, the stake of your plant at, in the hands of uh, the people who are not well trained who does not have knowledge about the biogas we give the trainings but uh, obviously there uh, are people uh, not in india but across the globe also people who understand initially but does not follow it uh, uh, regularly so obviously it uh, results in uh, decreasing the gas output uh, and uh, destroying the life of the plant so we at gruner what we are also building along with the plant is the scara system so the plant is fully automated uh, fully uh, monitored so the monitoring is not only done uh, at your uh, plant location or at your office but we as a company we take it as a responsibility that we all always do a 24/7 monitoring of the plant at our office uh, back there in delhi where it, our team of experts always see where if any problem is uh, getting uh, rising or uh, is rising so our team is uh, immediately asking our clients to take care of that problem because uh, it is better uh, to solve the uh, the problem at the inception rather than wait uh, for making it get uh, to get worse so we always uh, are very focused in the doing this uh, monitoring at our office uh, why we are also very much responsible uh, for uh, this uh, biogas output and the plants we why uh, is the simple reason that we don't think that uh, if anyone is investing any money uh, in any of his business so it is our responsibility to offer the best of the technology best of the plants with the best quality so that obviously this industry can grow and grow further <coughs> so we uh, uh, we uh, also also think uh, that is apart from uh, uh, follow, following uh, this scara as a the thing but we also have a r and d team wherein in spite of getting the technology from biology germany we always think there is a, always a scope of improvement everyone knows that indian brains uh, can work wonders so we always feel that uh, uh, while biology germany is with us we also have to use our brains to improvise uh, the plant outputs plant operations so for this we all uh, have our own r&d team uh, research and development team at bagger in delhi we are working regularly on different type of feed stock just of course this uh, research is being uh, done in consultation with biology germany and mr dusa uh, so uh, we are uh, having couple of guiding angels with us uh, to help us in delivering the uh, right uh, results uh, for the uh, for setting the plan so uh, we uh, our team of uh, is very much uh, coming from different different uh, uh, industry uh, uh, companies so the team uh, i have chosen is very much pick choose uh, to be honest uh, because i always never believe that uh, uh, any uh, for for me starting a new company you always have to have a, a core people core team members 
so i have personally picked choose uh, these people uh, to come and join uh, me in my mission uh, to transform uh, the indian economy to a green economy so we uh, are very much focused uh, uh, in the sense of i would also uh, like to thank a uh, few people uh, who have helped runner uh, to get such a big name uh, in just 5 months uh, and now uh, in entire india people are talking about runner so first thanks i would like to give uh, to mr chal thur who obviously trusted us to set up this plant on biogas and uh, on nepal gas uh, i would like to thank uh, three people uh, basically uh, who trusted us where before when we started the company when my company was formed so they are sitting here uh, with us uh sir ganga sir the shubha the shrinivas so these three uh, young uh, gentlemen they come from nanded so uh, they they uh, i mean this was a good uh, thing which happened and uh, obviously we are very much responsible for uh, gate setting of the plant our company got incorporated on 17 feb but these gentlemen gave us a check for big value don't the number well, uh, number of the amount but they give us a check on 2nd of february you know believe it i mean ha- having this kind of industry uh, negativity in the industry people are trusting you so there could be something uh, good i have done or uh, i don't know uh, they how uh, what happened and what thought they uh, they got and uh, they just uh, had a good trust on us apart from this i would also like to thank uh, my team members uh, so when i started my company so few uh, core em- uh, employees few core people uh, who uh, without even thinking uh, much about their future for the career they ca- came with us they came with us uh, into our journey so uh, there was nothing no company no office nothing was there but these people had trust on me so uh, in this people uh, i have uh, sir gajan deshmukh uh, heads maharashtra for uh, for gruna he is uh, not only uh, not an employee he is a family to us and uh, he was a person who was there standing with me uh, when uh, i was starting uh, the company along with him there were few other people who are not here in the in this event who are in delhi but yes they were there so i'm very much thankful and uh, also feel very lucky that uh, these people joined uh, me in my mission uh, to transform uh, the indian economy into a green economy so this is uh, since we started late uh, so i won't take much of your time on the technology because i want you to hear uh, the uh, technology from the technology expert by the germany so they will be coming up and sharing the what technology we are building plant on so uh, i would really thank you again everyone for coming uh, uh, spending time for this event uh, and uh, we are really sorry for keeping you wait uh, for delaying the program uh, because we were we don't want wanted that people should miss out anything so we just waited for everyone to join us uh, in this event and come and listen to us what we are uh, building here so i thank you thank you everyone aur samata for sharing your knowledge with us and uh, especially for highlighting the importance of napier grass in leading us towards a more sustainable and a greener future and we are confident that your vision to enhance the infrastructure for biogas in india it's going to reach great heights it's a commendable vision and it truly fills us with a lot of optimism thank you thank you so much for that and now ladies and gentlemen it's time that we call on stage the representatives from bioenergy germany as i have already mentioned earlier that they have been into this industry for more than 20 years now more than 20 years of making a positive change to the society bringing the environment economy and society together with their efforts their strategies towards a more sustainable and a greener future so we have joining us up on stage mr dirk simon who is the manager corporate communications from bioenergy germany followed by dr niels rockman who is the md and ceo 
for Bioenergy Germany, Southeast Asia. So I would request Mr. Dirk to please join us on the stage first. Let's give a very warm welcome as he joins us here. I get my presentation in a couple of seconds. Okay. On behalf of Bioenergy Germany Group, we extend a warm welcome and express our heartfelt gratitude for forming a partnership agreement with Luna. Thank you very much for this. As we embark on this journey together, we are filled with anticipation and optimism for a prosperous future. The union of our organizations signifies not just a mere collaboration, but a fusion of shared goals, innovation and dedication towards achieving sustainable energy solutions. We believe that this partnership will pave the way for significant advancements in the biogas sector, driving both economic and environmental benefits. We are thrilled to combine our German engineered technology with Gruna, exceptional capabilities to contribute to a greener future. As we move forward, we commit to an open, collaborative relationship and eagerly anticipate the valuable advancements of our combined effort will bring. Thank you again for choosing Bioenergy Germany Group as your partner. We are excited for the journey ahead and the prosperity it holds for both of us. Uh, this overview is uh, for your information because this is a very long presentation. <laughs> Uh, and now, welcome to a presentation on the Bioenergy Germany Group, a pioneer in the biogas industry with an established history spanning over two decades. We are known globally as a premier provider of complete biogas systems, services and requirements. Our group holds an un unrevealed reputation in developing, constructing and operating biogas plants across the world. With expertise and careful operations, we ensure an outstanding average plant efficiency of more than 96 annually percent, translating to 350 days of full load per year. Our proficiency doesn't end here. We are known for our biological support of, of, of over 300 biogas plants worldwide, underlining our position as a global leader. Moreover, we specialize in providing 24-7 monitoring and operation for hundreds of these plants. Shifting our focus of to Southeast East Southeast Asia, our division in this region was established in Thailand in 2015, with our regional headquarters nested in Korat, led by Mr. Nis Rodman. This division delivers a wide range of services, which includes project development, engineering, plant construction, and optimization of underperforming biogas plants. We are also heavily interested in research and development to ensure continuous growth and innovation. Furthermore, our dedicated teams in Southeast Asia provide critical biological maintenance service and 24-7 plant monitoring, ensuring our partners always have our support. In conclusion, Bioenergy Germany Group stands as a global pillar in the biogas industry, committed to delivering innovative solutions and continuous support to our partners across the globe. We are proud to share that our group builds more than 20 years of experience in designing, manufacturing and operating biogas plants, with an extensive knowledge of biological support for hundreds of biogas facilities around the globe. Building on this wealth of experience, we have been able to create plant concepts finally tuned to specific project needs. This expertise is particularly suited to the demands of Southeast Asia and other hot tropical regions. Let's delve into our specialized monitoring and analysis capabilities. We have established a dedicated laboratory and 24-7 monitoring room in Thailand to facilitate detailed review and control of biogas plant of biology and operations. This isn't just a, t a testament to our technical proficiency, it underscores our commitment to continuous monitoring and control of the biology processes and operations a proven formula for sustainable economic success. Our Southeast Asia operations are centralized in our Thailand headquarters, which serves as the nerve center of our regional activities. From this hub, we develop new projects, managing ongoing engagements, organize and conduct service and maintenance, 
and provide biological support for various plants. All of this is made possible by our use of state-of-the-art technology for project monitoring and control. In summary, Bioenergy Germany Group continues to lead the burgers industry by combining depth and deep industry experience with forward-looking innovation and an unwavering commitment to our operations in Southeast Asia. With a strong track record spanning over 20 years, we are taking our commitment to renewable energy solutions even further. Our group is proud to announce the upcoming establishment of new service centers in Malawi and Japan. These centers will further enhance our global presence and allow us to provide even better service and support to our customers in these regions. The Malawi Service Center marks a significant milestone in our commitment to expanding our reach and impact. Malawi, with its immense potential for sustainable energy, presents us with an opportunity to make a real difference in the region. Our service center will be equipped to provide top-notch biogas systems, equipment and services tailored to the unique needs of Malawi's environment and communities. Uh, we have a lot of partners worldwide um, uh, named uh, Blue Hills Capital Project in the area of South Africa, Retech Energy in Thailand region, Optimization Solutions Asia Engineering for Taiwan, Malaysia, Biofactory in South Korea, and last but not least, today, Lunar Renewable Energies for India. Let's have a closer look on Bioenergy Germany's group's unique proposition in the biogas sector, stemming from our roots in German technology. We pride ourselves on leveraging German biogas technology that has been continually developed and refined over the last 25 years. This technology, underscored by in-depth knowledge about the biology of biogas production, is capable of processing hundreds of different types of feedstocks. Our robust and highly efficient process minimizes disruption and maximizes output. The results speak for themselves. With more than 16,000 CSCR biogas plants successfully operating worldwide, of which over 10,000 are situated in Germany alone. Our commitment to excellence extends to the quality and durability of our equipment. We don't compromise on quality and ensure that every piece of equipment meets our high standards. Our years of experience combined with our technology skills has equipped us with an in-depth understanding of the biological processes involved in biogas production. In conclusion, BioNG Germany Group is not just an industry leader, but a company rooted in the innovation, efficiency, and German engineered precision. We continue to set the bar high, delivering unmatched quality, robust processes, and high efficiency to our partners globally. Now we are focusing on the global impact of the bioenergy German group powered by the German technology. Our technology is globally embraced, marking its presence in various corners of the world. Moreover, it's climate independent, making a versatile solution adaptable to diverse environmental conditions. Notably, the bioenergy Germany group has finely tuned this technology to local conditions and requirements. We believe in delivering solutions that fit, ensuring our technology serves the specific needs of each local. This adaptive approach amplifies the efficacy and reach of our biogas solutions, solidifying our position as global leader in the industry. And we go in depth for some information about the company and our technical solutions by Dr. Nils Wortmann. much for having us here today and special thanks to Bruna Renewable Energy and Mr. Gupta to organizing this event and giving us the opportunity to share our technology with you. This is what I want to do today. I want to give you an uh, inside view in our company, what we are doing, what are our services and uh, so I just pick up the opportunity directly and start here. So here you can see our headquarter in Germany, that are the top two pictures. Um, we also uh, have a related research facility, this is a picture on the uh, bottom left. 
and a short idea how our lab is equipped. You can see on the bottom right, these are continuously uh, CSTR tests in the laboratory. Oh, it's okay, thank you very much. Here, so it was mentioned already a few times before, we have uh, plenty of experience in the plant design, plant installation, uh, service and maintenance. This is very important. We're not working only in the bureau and doing the design. We also build the plant. Um, we also operating plants for our customer and food client. We offering the service and maintenance of each component we providing. Um, and we offering a 24-7 monitoring service. I will give you a bit more ideas about this a bit later. And of course, we're providing biological support. This will be one of the things I will uh, mention today probably uh, very often, because the biogas plant is not a machine you can turn on and you can turn off. The biogas plant is a housing for the microorganisms, the bacteria, and the bacteria doing the job and producing the gas. So our job is to make it for the bacteria as comfortable as possible to ensure they're working as good as possible uh, for us. So here you can see, um, this is one of our reference plants, it's a one megawatt plant, and here the farmer is just feeding the feeding system. On the top right, this is uh, one of our uh, factory-made uh, technical buildings. This is a plug-and-play component. We design it and build it in the factory, bring it to the plant site, and then we can connect everything within very few days. But we not only do the uh, construction and uh, design for the biogas plants, we also um, are able to provide special purpose machinery, like uh, you can see here, this is, a, um, this is an XXL liquid solid separation system, which is mobile. This was developed for a customer in Germany, because their the plants are quite small, or not every biogas plant has its own liquid solid separation system. So there was one company, they uh, asked us to design and build this uh, mobile uh, separator, and now they are traveling from biogas plant to biogas plant and separating um, the, uh, the effluent of the biogas plant there as a service. We also have our own software development team. This is very important because uh, to operate the biogas plant we're going with the philosophy to optimize as much as possible. So, um, and during the last uh, 20 years we develop and optimize. With each, each biogas plant, we optimize our system a bit more. And um, our own software, it's called IQC, um, is, uh, is uh, um, yeah, we, we develop it and optimize this during the last years. And the uh, um, plant can be operated from the computer on site, but also remote. And you also get a smartphone, you can get smartphone apps for your smartphone or for your tablet, and you can operate and you can monitor and control the plant uh, everywhere uh, on the world. So this is a picture from our uh, facility in Thailand. On the top left is our engineering building, and uh, very close to it is our uh, workshop, which is from the top right. And, uh, we're also working very close with uh, the authorities in Thailand, especially with EGAT. EGAT is the uh, electricity uh, generating authority of Thailand. And uh, in 2020, uh, it was an honor to welcome uh, the deputy governor of EGAT in our office to present our technology to them. So we are uh, offering different services. Of course, one main topic is the engineering service. We also provide uh, to Gruner and to support them with this. Um, so we can we, we do the plant developing and engineering. Um, we can do this on a conceptual basis, but also with a very deep, detailed up to construction drawings. 
um, for us is very important that the plants we are designing coming with the highest possible efficiency. And by this reason, each plant is tailor-made for, for the respective project. So it's very important if you only take one system design and use it as a copy and paste for other projects, you cannot reach the high efficiency because each project and the requirement of each project is, are different. And of course, during the last uh, now eight years, we also collected a lot, uh, a lot of knowledge about the feedstocks in Southeast Asia and uh, like naked grass, for example, uh, which is now a benefit coming to India where the feedstocks are very similar. These are some examples, here are some examples shown for a biogas plant based on napier grass we designed for a project called Energy for All. Um, this is a governmental project in Thailand. The size of the biogas plant is uh, uh, given with 3 megawatt per plant and uh, based on napier grass and based on two different species of napier grass we have two different general designs. Um, so here we have the two 3D pictures but also layout plan just as an example. And in this case the biogas is used to produce electricity and then it will be fed to the public grid. Besides the design and construction and operation of new biogas plants, um, we also optimize existing biogas plants. This is currently one of our main business in Europe, but also in, uh, in Asia, this is a very important topic. Here we have an example. This plant is uh, uh, we are built by a competitor in the northeast part of Thailand, and the plant was designed for one megawatt. But finally, our customer was never able to reach this one megawatt. These uh, the output was always around 400 to 500 kilowatt, so not even 50% of the plant design capacity. And this is a financial disaster for the owner, of course. So then they hired us um, to support them to optimize the plant. And we carried out uh, this optimization in several steps. So um, in December 2020, uh, we stepped into this project and at first we have to uh, develop uh, a good database. And uh, on, on the y-axis you can see the output of the uh, plant in uh, kilowatt hours and on the right hand side the efficiency of the plant. And the timeline is on the uh, x-axis. So um, yeah, at the beginning we started with the biological service and maintenance. We started with the biological service and maintenance in December, so to collect the data and to stabilize the biological process. The success didn't come in immediately, so um, we also have to uh, optimize the operation. And um, after around about two months, we saw the first effect, which, which comes with a with a jump to approximately 70 percent. Um, so here, this is a phase where we detected the data uh, to get a good database, and then here we started with the optimization process for the biology, and then after what about one to one and a half months, we got this jump in the efficiency. Uh, only by adaption of the operation. So the, at this point there was no change in the mechanical equipment or anything, only operation was adapted and the biological conditions were adjusted. So and then we uh, optimized some equipment, we replaced agitators, adjust, uh, adjusted the angles and so on, and we start to edit micronutrients. This is a very important part because because the bacteria, they need a certain um, availability of micronutrients. If one of these micronutrients is missing, the efficiency of the microorganisms is reduced. 
So, and after mechanical optimization and adding the uh, chemicals, the nutrients, uh, the plant uh, climbed up to around about 92 to 97 percent of efficiency. Of course, you can see still here some fluctuation. This is caused uh, by the feedstock. Um, so the feedstock the customer use is not very stable all the, uh, uh, during the days. So this fluctuation, of course, are shown in the uh, output of the plant also. But you can see a very clear trend. Okay, a very important part is for us also the research and development. Um, so, because we are the plant manufacturer, but also optimizer and also sometimes operator, uh, we have some requirements on the components. And by this reason, we also developed our own equipment. Um, we sell this to other companies, but use it also in our own plants. And one of this is, on example, a mixing system, a long shaft agitator, which combines all requirements uh, we have for a long shaft agitator. And we are uh, optimizing the, uh, the kind of reactors for, uh, for, uh, to the requirement in <coughs> Southeast Asia especially. So mainly we are focused on the CSTR technology. These are just tanks with mixing system and double membrane cover on top. But in some cases, especially if we have, a, uh, if we have feedstock with a low energy density, um, but a huge volume, like wastewater, for example, then the, um, the use of a CSTR is probably not the best choice because it's still a, a very good technology, but it's not feasible anymore. And for this, um, especially in uh, Southeast Asia, lagoons are a very common system, but this lagoon is coming with a lot of issues on efficiency, on operation, um, but also on safety. So we developed our lagoon 4.0, where we're combining the benefits of a lagoon system with a very big volume and a quite low investment on the one hand and the um, possibility to mix and control the system like a CSTR. The lagoon has a flat cover, there is no bubble on top and uh, you can walk on top of the uh, liner and during the service hatches you can lift and uh, maintain the agitators. Further, of course, as I mentioned before, the biology is the, or the one or maybe the most important part in the biogas plant. And to, uh, to ensure that the biology and the bacteria are uh, on a good level, we have to understand uh, the biology in deep detail. And this is an analysis we carried out uh, with the university uh, where we showed or we have, where we detected what kind of bacteria and microorganisms are in the tanks or in the, in the digestate and what bacteria is doing what job. And what we can see he, here, only the green part is at around about 6.6 .6 or uh, 7 point a bit percent. They producing the methane. All other bacteria are only to support um, the methane producing microorganisms. They decompose the material, they prepare it, and then the hard job, or the most important job for us, will be done by the green group. So, and this green group is also the most sensitive group in the digester and in the total process. So the whole process is designed, should be designed, to keep this bacteria happy. And to ensure uh, that these uh, bacteria are un in good conditions, um, we generally also pr uh, provide a laboratory service. 
So take a sample from the biogas plant one time a week or all two weeks, send it to the laboratory, and then the conditions of the digestate will be detected, pH will be measured, the VFA TAC will be analyzed. This is an indicator about the production of acids and the buffer capacity of the plant and an indicator about the health of the bacteria. So if you take care of the bacteria, then of course um, you can operate in a biological optimum and a biological optimum leads to an efficiency optimum of your plant. Of course, this is a certain effort you have to, uh, uh, to bring, but finally you have less costs because you have less fluctuation in your plant a higher gas production and especially a continuous gas production and you um, protect your equipment. This one example uh, is one of our laboratories where we analyze all um, the essential plant, uh, parameter, the focus on biogas. So we are a special lab for biogas but not for other uh, analyzers. And here the main analysis we carry out are pH value, uh, the electrical conductivity, BFA TAC ratio, uh, dry matter, organic dry matter, nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen, but also the acetic acid equivalent and spectrum. So on the one hand the VFA TAC can show us if the biology is healthy or not, but the this ratio do not mention what is the issue. So for this we have the acid, uh, the acid spectrum and based on the acid spectrum and the um, amount of the different acids we can analyze and estimate what is the issue and then we can solve it. Of course we also carry out uh, the analysis of micro and trace elements. We are doing gas quality analysis on site and we are very focused on the gas yield test. This is very important for the plant design. And uh, for the gas yield test, I will say something on the next page. Yeah. So this is a gas yield test carried out for a napier grass species in Thailand. And um, so this is a, the curve here. We have the uh, the, the timeline and the, the cumulative gas production. Here it's indicated the methane content, the average methane content, and the gas production of three parallel samples. So you can see there are small variations between the samples, um, but all in all they are very stable. And um, somewhere we reach an, uh, a plateau, a limit, and based on this, we can uh, provide the data required for the plant design. So here we know exactly from this um, napier grass, each ton uh, fresh matter or raw material will produce 89.8 uh, cubic meter of biogas. And to make it comparable with other samples, we are always focused on the organic dry matter because the dry matter can change from day to day. Uh, maybe with small fluctuations only, but the specific gas yield focus on the organic dry matter is quite fixed. So and then of course we also analyze uh, the uh, percentage of the methane um, and the H2S content on example um, to have a good overview of the gas production and the gas quality to design the plant uh, as accurate as possible because on this way you get the perfect plant for your project and of course you can save a lot of costs. If you don't have this analysis you need to over design the plant to ensure that you never fail the project. Okay, we're also offering 24-7 monitoring service. Um, we can connect our uh, plants to our 24-7 monitoring uh, room in Germany or Thailand. Uh, from there, engineers can log in to, the, to our biogas plants and support the plant operator and owner um, 
to operate its plant, to solve issues if some issues happen. This is a short overview, so um, that are screenshots from different biogas plants from the main page of the control system. Um, all in all, the worst of our biogas plants is operating with 92% efficiency. So this means the plant operates 336 days per year, 24 hours a day with 100% efficiency. There's a limit because you have to carry out some maintenance and during the time of maintenance you uh, cannot produce the gas. But in average we work around 96% efficiency. And this is a very important number. So we know that most of our competitors, for example in Southeast Asia, they work with uh, efficiency numbers around 60 to 70 percent. So and uh, over the time, of course, the 62 uh, percent more efficiency coming with a huge benefit and ensures the feasibility of the biogas plant operation. Here is uh, one of our monitoring rooms. Um, this is the northern part of Germany. Here is the border to Denmark and here is Denmark. And each pin, each green pin here is one of uh, our biogas plants. Each blue one is the wind turbine park and each yellow one is a solar park. Wind and solar is not built by us, but we can implement them to our systems. So, and then our team can click on one of these uh, uh, pins, then we open automatically the control system of the plant and we can see what the operator sees. Of course, the operator has a higher security level and if they change the password, we cannot log in anymore. So, it's not a, a back door to, to enter the system, so it's in the hand of the owner, of course, if we should join. We also offer generally service maintenance, for this we have uh, automized uh, services and structures. This is an example on-site on plant with the sensors, the PLCs and so on. They can be connected to our control room as mentioned before or our service center and in case one of the components is defect, uh, our service team in this, uh, on this here in, it is in Thailand get information, on example, the sensor is defect or the pump must be maintained in 200 hours and then our team can contact uh, the plant operator and provide the service. This is an option, but it's not uh, mandatory, of course. So the, here I want to share some experience, some pictures um, where we visited our reference plants in Germany together with customers from Southeast Asia. Um, the most of our plants in Europe uh, operating already since 10 to 15 years and uh, st uh, still working on a very, very high level. Here an example, we visited a plant using corn silage, a material very, very similar to napier grass, not 100%, but very close to it. And uh, the, uh, our customers were very interested how to feed the material, to touch it, to see the differences and similarities. This is our related research facility where we carry out batch tests with uh, on the uh, VDI 4630 standard I mentioned before. This is a batch test and we can also carry out continuous tests for a long period of time. But for the design generally the batch tests are absolutely sufficient. Um, the long-term tests we only carry out if we have a very complicated feedstock or feedstock mix like MSWs or organic fraction of it or uh, specific industrial uh, wastes. For nappy grass, it's not uh, necessary because it's uh, generally a very uh, nice and uh, good feedstock. So this is an external gas holder um, we're using in one of our plants and this plant also has uh, hot water storage. 
probably not interesting in India, but in Germany we have very cold winters and in some villages the heating of the houses is uh, connected to the biogas plant. And then the biogas plant owner have to guarantee that even on the, on the coldest day in the winter the houses will be heated. And for this they have very big, uh, so for the villagers, very big uh, hot water storages heated up by the uh, CHP, by the engine of the biogas plant. Okay, this is one uh, plant I mentioned before, it's a one megawatt plant and uh, with two CHPs in one container and then the uh, operator added one more CHP, a bigger one. So, and um, Today we're talking about the napier grass, but we are generally working with more than 580 different feedstocks. Depends on, uh, on the country and the industry and so on. So there's a huge range and all of this can be handled with the same system. Is a system is designed for it. And of course napier grass is one, uh, one important source. Um, in a second session in the afternoon, I will talk a bit about our experience of nap with napier grass and one of our plants we built uh, based on napier grass. But we are also treating MSW, um, organic fraction, food waste, or um, cassava, so tapioca, um, or waste from palm oil industry, not only the liquid effluent, the coal, also the empty fruit bunch, which is very hard to treat, but of course also cattle manure, cattle slurry, slurry uh, is a very welcome source for uh, biogas production. Okay, here we're giving a small overview about an, an excerpt of our reference lists, um, built 2008, 9 or 2010, so we built small biogas plants with 0.5 megawatts uh, output or 250 kilowatt output, but also bigger biogas plants with 3 megawatt, 1 megawatt, um, based on feedstocks very similar to napier grass, but also cattle manure or waste or something like this. Um, currently, we are uh, very focused also on. on projects together with a partner from the United States. They're producing uh, bio-methanol as a fuel for the big vessels, an example for Maersk or other shipping companies. This is mainly uh, focused on uh, MSW treatments, but um, as, uh, for the project mentioned before, it's called Energy for All in Thailand. Um, we're also uh, going to build uh, seven biogas plants um, based on napier grass in Thailand. And this is something where we are very proud on um, our biogas plant in Malawi. Beginning of this year, uh, we signed the contract to build the biggest biogas plant um, in the world. And this is based on napier grass with 5,400 tons to produce 56 megawatt power per hour um, in the session. Uh, in the afternoon, I will give you also some overview about this project. So here are some uh, photos and general overviews about very few of our very few of our references. On example, an eight megawatt plant located in Southeast Asia. Uh, it was built in 2016-17 and commissioned in 2018. This is based on napier grass, but also agriculture residues, uh, fruit waste, and uh, chicken or cattle manure. Um, this is a plant in the United States where uh, uh, MSW is treated. So MSW currently for us is a very big uh, topic. So here we show some more. This is a plant plant also for MSW in um, Indonesia and uh, we also signed a pre-contract already 
and uh, we are focused to start with the construction and to finalize the uh, contract uh, before the uh, third qu uh, quarter of 2024. Just uh, uh, completed, so uh, Matthias, who is uh, here with me, uh, he took the responsibility for the construction on site. This is a MS, uh, municipal wastewater treatment plant, and we were responsible for a part of it, not for the whole system, but for a part of it. And uh, here, we, our system is able to treat and handle up to 30,000 cubic meters of wastewater per hour, but a maximum of 500,000 cubic meters per day. And here, the, final, the end customer is the government of Kuwait. This is an example for the construction steps of a biogas plant. This is uh, in Germany, you can see some snow on top of the roofs. So here we started with the construction, we have two digester and two, uh, two digester and two secondary digesters. Um, this plant is made for two megawatt, we have two engines, and this plant is operating since 2018 with a proven uh, efficiency of 96% over all the years. Here's a second plant, also for operating with energy crops, one megawatt installed capacity and 97% efficiency. Here you can see submersible agitators. Uh, uh, this is a fixed one with an installed in the middle of the tank and this is an uh, adjustable submersible agitator where we can adjust the height. This is uh, one of the biggest plants in Germany with 4.5 megawatt uh, output, power production. Um, it, it, it is in operation since 2015 and operates an average with operates an average with 96 percent efficiency. So you will see all of our plants in this range because our customer only on the money is efficiency higher than 90 percent. This is caused by the huge cost of operation and feedstock in Europe. So the benefit is, of course, we bring this also to Southeast Asia and also to India, and this is the benefit of our customers here, of course. This is one of the Lagoon 4.0. This is just on the construction. Uh, on the picture, it's just on the contract, uh, construction. Um, Here the 3D uh, drawings uh, I mentioned also before. This is a biogas plant. We talked in detail also before the optimization. And um, now a very, very short technology overview. Um, besides the different components, which we can supply, but do not need to supply, um, we're also offering an engineering. And this uh, is very important in the cooperation with Gruner. Um, we can uh, uh, um, provide and we can carry out all kinds of plant-related engineering, 3D modeling and CFD calculations. CFD calculations are important to ensure that the mixing system, which is a very, very important part in the plant design, works uh, uh, very sufficient. And this is an example for the biggest tank we designed uh, until now. It's 39, uh, 36 meter in diameter and 18 meter height um, with a total volume of 17,800 kilometers. This is a short overview how we uh, carry out the CFD analyzers. Uh, so we have the, extra, the long shaft agitators placed, uh, placed in the different locations and we adjust the angle uh, in for the most uh, optimal angle and then we calculate and design um, via software and then we get results like this. We get the top view, we get the cross section and then we can see exactly um, where the mixing comes with a very good mixing effect. In this case red is very good and uh, dark blue is not good. But please keep in mind, at this point is a center pole where the roof is installed on, so there's a concrete column, there cannot be a mixing effect. Um, 
So, but by this way, we can prove that the, that the mixing system we're providing, or what we design or suggest, for sure will mix the system. This is very important. And of course, this we're also offering as, uh, as part of our engineer. So then, based on the um, project requirements, we choose the right feeding system. So this depends on the requirement of the project, of the customer, but especially on the feedstock. And there are different systems. You can go with a complete liquid mixing, then you have a feeding tank, mix liquid with a napier grass, and then you can transfer it to the uh, digester. This is one option. In some cases, this is very difficult. And then we have a solid dosing system, where you put in the feedstock. The feedstock will be dosed by weight, into a mixing pump with a hopper and from here it will be transferred as a liquid material to the tank. Um, this is for sure uh, the more expensive system but in some cases, for example for MSW, it is required. Then of course the double membrane cover is a very important part to store your gas and to, use, uh, and, and to ensure the safe storage of it. Okay, here we show you, of course, our agitator, but there are also other brands you can use, also some other brands where, uh, which are very good. Uh, important is that you have the right arrangement of the provided agitators, that they are able to handle the heavy duty job in a digester, and um, to ensure that the mixing is on a good level, that you don't have too much uh, service and maintenance requirements on the agitators. And uh, in the most cases, we also recommend to heat the tank, to stabilize the temperature in the tank, and to ensure that the microorganisms uh, are provided with the right temperature. So and, uh, in this case, we're using corrugated stainless steel pipes um, for the best heat transfer and to ensure that there's no service and maintenance required. For your general background, plant, biogas plants can be operated in two temperature ranges. One, uh, one is a thermophilic process uh, with 52 degrees. Um, this microorganism or this process is more efficient than the mesophilic process, but it's more challenging and heat is required. So if you are producing power, then you have a CHP to produce power and you have waste heat. This waste heat is for free, and you can use it to optimize your process. If you're producing CNG, you don't have an engine. It means you need additional gas to produce heat, to heat up the process. And then the benefit of the thermophilic process uh, is not there anymore. So then you can go also with a second temperature range, this is 39 degrees. There's one option to go with ambient temperature. This is uh, possible under a certain range. Uh, in Europe, this is not possible because we have winters of minus 20 degrees, and if you freeze your bacteria, they will not work. So, and uh, especially if you want to add a lot of manure, for example, chicken manure, which has a high nitrogen load, then the mesophilic process is a better choice anyway because with high temperatures, the nitrogen can become toxic for the microorganisms, but not necessarily. Okay, we also um, design and uh, technical buildings in our factory, uh, we build in our factory, design it, and then we can deliver it to the site. Um, in some cases, especially for our customer in the United States or Kuwait, uh, they want turnkey solutions, send it by ship, and then install it on site. They want as less as work to do on site. This is an example. So here, it's the uh, technical building is delivered in the morning time, and it's installed in the evening. This is, uh, have a look into it. Uh, this is a part with uh, feeding distribution system. On the other side, you cannot see now. There is a control system and the switchgear installed. So for our uh, um, for our software we're coming with, this IcoSea, 
with a very user-friendly uh, intuitive design. Um, you don't need to, to study it for a long time. After one day, every one of us would be able to operate it. And um, the plant can be operated up to 100%. And it provides a lot of support to the operator. You get uh, you can integrate a CCTV system to log in and have a look what has happened on your site. You can get it in different languages and also all data are stored in the system. This is important if you want to optimize your plant at a later point. So here I will just uh, skip through this uh, or jump through the, 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 the next uh, slides. All of the slides showing part of the of one uh, of, of the control system of one plant. Uh, you will get information about the components and you can click on the component, get a new page with much more details where you can adjust everything. But you can also see what your plant has just happened. So here an example will uh, uh, the system will pump from uh, the digester through the pump to the secondary digester. You can see it because the pipeline is colored and the active components are labeled with a green motor and this valve is open, it has a green cylinder, so you can see exactly what's happened with your plant, the filling level of the gas storage, the agitator moving or not moving, filling level of the tanks and so on. Here you also can uh, implement the feeding plan. So part of the engineering is to provide an optimum feeding plan. This can be added to the uh, control system and then, based on the feeding plan, the plant is carrying out the uh, feeding automatically. So here we implemented CHPs, but of course also PSAs can, also, uh, can, uh, can be implemented. And uh, before we, we finish with the presentation, I want to focus one more time on the biology um, and the requirement of micronutrients. So, especially if you go with, uh, with a monosubstrate, so 100% napier grass or 100% corn or whatever, then there will be a lack of micronutrient supply. Not at the beginning, but over time it will happen. Because the components required by the microorganisms are not part of the napier grass. And then it's recommended to add every day a small amount of micronutrients designed for your plant. Then we're talking about a glass full, so 200 milliliter or something like this. Um, if you add this every day, you ensure the biological optimum for your biogas plant, for the bacteria, and of course for the output of your system. Okay, here is uh, some uh, of the nutrients we delivered in, in the Philippines or in Thailand. And here we see also the effect of the adding, uh, the to, to add, uh, after we add the, the, uh, the nutrients. So here in this part, the plant operated with around about, uh, with an output of around about 100 cubic meter per hour, um, which is significantly below the design a parameter. Here we added the micronutrients and then we had a significant increase above the, uh, the design capacity because there were a lot of acids already, the bacteria now were able to decompose and after a certain period of time um, it drops down and stabilized at the design uh, parameter. Okay, so I, I tried to give you a rough overview and uh, of course, uh, after the sessions, uh, I'm very happy to answer all your questions uh, in a separate meeting. Thank you very much for having us here and for your questions. Quite a detailed and comprehensive overview of Bioenergy Germany. Thank you so much for that, for enlightening us. And now with this, ladies and gentlemen, moving further, there is one very popular quote said by Lao Tzu. He said that the journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. Okay. 
and here in this room is sitting someone who has taken that step. So I would now request Mr. Achal Thul from APSS Bioenergy to please join us on the stage and share his thoughts about his association with Groner and Bioenergy. Over to you, sir. We all are looking forward to hear your thoughts. सबसे पहले मैं आप सबका स्वागत करना चाहता हूँ मेरी तरफ से और मेरी कंपनी की तरफ से हिंदी समझती है सबको अरे एक घंटा हो गया मेरे को ऐसा लग रहा है मैं जर्मनी में हूँ <laughs> समझती है ना अरे हो बोलो यानी इंडिया से है ना सब <laughs> और ग्रोना रिन्यूएल पर एनर्जी और बायो एनर्जी का भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद चाहूंगा कि उन्होंने आपके सामने मुझे बोलने का मौका दिया कंपनी खड़ी करना है सबको खड़ी करना है yes. <laughs> लगता नहीं है ऐसा <laughs> मुझे ऐसा लग रहा है कि मुझे बस सुनने के लिए आए हैं और कंपनी कैसी चलती है ये देखने के लिए आए अरे बुलाऊंगा सबको मैं सात ग्यारह दो हजार तेईस को अपनी कंपनी की ओपनिंग है डिक्लेयर किया है सात ग्यारह दो हजार तेईस की अपने कंपनी की ओपनिंग होगी हंड्रेड परसेंट शादी हो गई सबकी पक्का इनविटेशन कार्ड छपाई थे छपाई थे तारीख भी डाला होगा तारीख आने के बाद में किसी ने पोस्टपेड कर दी शादी नहीं वैसी तारीख अगर डिसाइड है तो वो तारीख को होना ही चाहिए रही बात पैसे लगाने की अपने बीस करोड़ बराबर है अपने पास में पैसा नहीं है भाई लेकिन अपन पैसा जरूर लगा रहे शादी हो गई बच्चे भी हैं, एडमिशन करा लिया सबका पक्का होता तो अरे एंटरटेनमेंट इसलिए होना चाहिए सब जन सो रहे थे ऐसा लगा रहे थे। अरे अपने बच्चे हैं और बच्चे की एडमिशन करने के लिए जैसे अपन स्कूल कॉन्वेंट में जाते हैं पैसे नहीं रहे थे लेकिन फिर भी अपने बच्चे के पढ़ाई के लिए अपन एडमिशन के लिए पैसे कैसे ना कैसे लाते बराबर है बच्चा पढ़ेगा बड़ा होगा डिग्री हासिल करेगा हर किसी का सपना रहता मेरा बच्चा डॉक्टर बनेगा बराबर है ना पैसा खर्चा करती लेकिन आउटपुट कहाँ से मिलेगा बच्चा डॉक्टर बनेगा तभी मिलेगा ना ये भी मेरा बच्चा है मेरा प्लान इसके लिए मैं पैसा खर्चा कर रहा हूँ और मेरी पढ़ाई है कसवी पैसा मेरे पढ़ाई के लिए खर्चा नहीं हो रहा फिर भी मैं अपने पढ़ाई के लिए खर्चा कर रहा हूँ तो ऐसा सब जो बच्चे के लिए और मेरे पढ़ाई के लिए बीस करोड़ खर्चा कर रहा हूँ आउटपुट तो बाद में निकलेगा ही ना लाइफ टाइम पेंशन भी मिलेगा तो ये सोच के अपन ये कंपनी ओपन करने के लिए सोचा लेकिन कैसा है सबको ऐसा लगता कि नहीं बा मैं पढ़ाई करूंगा क्लास में नंबर वन आऊंगा लगता है ऐसा लेकिन इंडिया में ऐसा किसी ने सोचा नहीं है कि नेपियर पे चलने वाला प्लांट यानी सुन रहे लेकिन ओपन करने का कोई नहीं सोच रहा तो मैंने सोचा चलो नंबर वन ओपन ही आते इसलिए लसनपुर में अपना वाला प्लांट नेपियर पे चलने वाला चालू कर रहे लोग बोलते हैं रिस्क है ट्विस्ट है तो इसलिए थोड़ा इष्ट भी करना चाहिए प्लांट के साथ में तो ऐसा है और नेपियर पे चलने वाला ही क्यों जैसे आप लोगों के सामने मैं बोल रहा हूँ वैसे मैं एक चीज सुन रहा था लैंडमार्क फोरम में और लैंडमार्क फोरम लीडर बता रहे थे ऐसे ही बोलने का मौका है दो मिनट तो वहां भी कसम खा लिया मैंने कि किसान सुसाइड नहीं करेंगे बहुत बुरा लगता है मुझे किसान का बेटा हूं ना किसान अगर सुसाइड करे तो बुरा लगता है तो किसानों के लिए कुछ ना कुछ करना चाहिए क्रांति की बातें सब करते हैं लेकिन आने वाले क्रांति के आप सब जनक हो तो आपके लिए तो तालियां बजनी चाहिए आने वाली पीढ़िया आपको दुआएं देगी क्रांति के जनक हो आप तो कुछ ना कुछ तो करना चाहिए इसलिए सुनने के लिए तो बहुत कम आते लोग लेकिन करने के लिए बहुत ज्यादा तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि प्लांट ओपन आप जरूर करेंगे यहां से जाने के बाद में बराबर है किसान नेपियर उगाएगा उनके जेब में पैसा आएगा और 
लोग सब जन बोलते कि ये अपने अन्नदाता जीने चाहिए लेकिन उनके बारे में कोई सोचता नहीं कि कैसे जिएंगे तो अपन ने कोई पहल करके मैं ऐसा सोचा कि नेपियर के ऊपर में मुझे प्लांट अगर खड़ा हो जाएगा उनके पास से अपन नेपियर लेके उनके पास से पैसा आएगा तो उनका जो रहन रहने का मंजन तरीका है वो यानी सुधर जाएगा तो पैसा हर किसी के जेब से निकालने की कोई सोचते हैं मैं डालने की सोचता हूँ लोगों के पैसे यानी कैसा निकालो बिजनेस करता हूँ बैंकिंग भी है अपनी बढ़िया <laughs> आपसे एफ डी लेना या कुछ लेना निकालने का भी सोचता हूँ तो ऐसा सोचा है कि किसानों को जेब में पैसे डालना चाहिए फिर से आएंगे मेरे पास में खाती अपने भी बैंक में निकालेंगे गुप्ता सर तो ऐसा है और बोरिंग भी हो गई ऐसा लगता है मुझे तो ज्यादा कुछ बोलूंगा नहीं आपके सामने तो सात ग्यारह को आप सबको मेरी तरफ से स्पेशली इनवाइट है और आप सबको आना है लसनपुर में और आप सबका तो एड्रेस अपने डायरी पे आया है है ना माई सेल्फ आचल तुल सब जन बोलते होंगे कि आचल तुल कौन मई हूँ लेडीज का नाम है ना ये भी नंबर वन है तो आपके सामने मुझे बोलने का मौका मिला बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका भी नहीं तो इस जमाने में कोई किसी की सुनता नहीं है आपने सुना है मुझे चलो थैंक यू Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Kul, for सभी लोग साथ में आने वाले हैं। So with this, I guess the wait is over, the moment is here when we are going to finally unveil the model of our plant. So I believe we all are ready for it. Yes, I'm excited. Fantastic. So, sir, I would request you, Mr. Thul, to please join us on stage one more time along with Mr. Utkarsh Gupta. and dr nils rotman i would request all the three gentlemen to please be here together and do the honor of unveiling the plant so as mr thul just said it's his baby unka bachcha hai ye bhi mere sath mein hai bhai bole to dost kam bhai hum dono sath sath mein kaam karte ho aur mere baad mein majin inka bhi plant bahut jaldi chalu ho jayega aur unke bhi inauguration ke liye isse double public bolenge aap par Thank you. Going to unveil it. All right. Three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the first ever Napier Cross Base Plant here in Nagpur. And Mr. Thul, you have taken the step. I believe this. Like to convince the Napier Cross to create an optimal plant. का मायन मॉडल आपके सामने हैं. लेकिन ये प्लांट रन करने के लिए मेरी टीम जो मेरे साथ में है मैं उनका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मानूंगा जो अपने घर से ये प्लान पे मैं रह रहे हैं मिस्टर शेखर श्रीवास्तव सर मोहित कन्नवर सर लोकेश राडे सर विनोद भाव डेकाटे और गलांडे सर मैं इनका बहुत बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ कि ये मेरे साथ में यानी अपना प्लान समझ के मैं मेरे साथ में काम कर रहे हैं आउटपुट इनको यानी कुछ भी नहीं लेकिन आपके सामने मैं और मैं ये कैलान करना चाहता हूँ कि जहाँ पे भी इन्होंने लागत लगाया होगा वो ये मुझे पता नहीं है लेकिन यहाँ पे जीरो परसेंट लागत में मैं इनको थर्टी परसेंट का पार्टनर मुझे बना रहा हूँ मेरे साथ में ऐसा कुछ नहीं इनके तरफ से ये रुपये भी मुझे इन्वेस्टमेंट नहीं है इन्वेस्टमेंट हंड्रेड परसेंट करूंगा लेकिन आउटपुट थर्टी परसेंट का इनको दूंगा क्योंकि ये भी उतनी ही मेहनत कर रहे हैं मेरे से ज्यादा वहां पे रहेंगे तो ये सब टीम वर्क का काम है ये आपके सामने मॉडल बढ़ाए ये सात ग्यारह को वीडियो आज पता है नहीं सर आपने ओके नो प्रॉब्लम वीडियो भी देख लिया तो ये जो मॉडल है ये सात ग्यारह को आपके सामने यानी हमारा सपना ये साकार हो जाएगा सात ग्यारह को और भारत का पहला नेपियर ग्रास पे चलने वाला पहला प्लांट आपके सामने चालू हो जाएगा बाद में मुझे पता नहीं नंबर दो पे कौन रहेगा तो आपके सामने बोल दिए So as he said that we have a video prepared on it. So very quickly, without any further ado, let's have a look at the video. is carefully designed to optimize maximum efficiency and productivity we have the raw material storage area 
Here, we store our desired organic materials. These materials such as the Napier grass feedstock for biogas production. Once the raw materials are collected, they undergo a meticulous pre-treatment and preparation process. As input received from our German technology partners, operators carefully sort, shred and mix the Napier grass to create an optimal blend for biogas production. The prepared Napier grass feedstock is then transferred to the feed tank. From here, a standard pumping technology ensures a steady supply of the Napier grass feedstock to the digesters for digestion purpose. Behold, our primary and secondary digesters. These large tanks house the anaerobic digestion process where the organic material is broken down by bacteria with continuous agitation process by German equipments in the absence of oxygen. The primary digester initiates the breakdown of complex organic matter while the secondary digester focuses on the optimum production of raw biogas. For a balanced ecosystem inside the digester, digesters are kept on for a stabilization period which efficiently results in high biogas production. During stabilization period, raw biogas with impurities is burnt through flare stack. Gruner have a cutting edge biogas upgrading system that purifies the biogas from 53% to 98%, removing impurities such as carbon dioxide, moisture and hydrogen sulphide. The result is BioCNG, a clean and versatile energy source and the purified gas stored into our gas holder. At high pressure compressor, purified biogas will be compressed and filled into cascades via many folds. Filled cascades will be transported to Gruner's dedicated CNG pumping station for distribution. Gruner uses centralized technology that is SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System, which remotely monitor critical parameters and optimize the plant's performance from plant and Gruner's control room at headquarters. As the digestion process continues, the leftover organic matter forms a nutrient-rich slurry and the slurry is sent through a solid liquid separator to separate solid and liquid fertilizer. The separated liquid fertilizer stored into slurry tank to utilize 100% in feed tank to enrich the Napier grass feedstock. Bruno strongly believes in circular economy. That's why we have a manure yard and compost shed where we process the leftover digestate into high quality manure. Safety is Gruner's utmost priority. In rare cases where excess biogas is produced or during maintenance procedures, we utilize a flare stack. Our on-site office room have our dedicated team who manages the day-to-day -day operations of the plant. From here, we monitor and coordinate the entire process, ensuring smooth operations and adherence to safety protocols. Thank you for joining Bruner on this tour of our state-of-the-art biogas plant. Together, let's embrace the power of biogas and build a sustainable clean energy world. Join Bruner for a sustainable world. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we truly hope that you like our state-of-the-art biogas plant here in Nagpur by Gruner Renewable Energy and Bioenergy Germany. So with this, finally the moment has come for which all of us have been waiting for. It's time to sign the partnership agreement between Gruner Renewable Energy and Bioenergy Germany. So I would request Mr. Utkarsh Gupta, founder and CEO Gruner Renewable Energy to please join us on the stage along with Dr. Niels Rotman, MD and CEO, Bioenergy Germany for Southeast Asia to please join us here and sign the agreement. Well, this significant collaboration represents a bold step towards a sustainable and greener future 
as both companies are extremely committed to advancing renewable energy solutions in the world. So, I believe we all are ready for it. This is such an exciting moment, such a commendable step towards a greener, better, and a more sustainable future. So I would now request the team to kindly present. Exchange it with the other. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, this is such an incredible moment. Congratulations. Congratulations to both Bruna Renewable Energy and Bioenergy Germany for this remarkable collaboration. We are confident that with Gruner's expertise in harnessing the power of nature and bioenergy Germany's dedication to innovative bio-based solutions, this partnership promises to revolutionize the renewable energy landscape. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as the partnership agreement has been signed and exchanged. It's time to shake hands and mark this collaboration official. Wow. We would request both of you to please come together and let's take a picture on the stage. Fantastic. Everybody, please give a rousing round of applause to them. I know you all have been waiting to ask some questions. So, gentlemen, I would request both of you now to please stay back on the stage as we have some questions from media. So, if you have any questions, you are requested to please raise your hand. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We will pass the mic pass karenge and you can ask your question. My name is Ashok Padmakar Pawa from Jalna, Maharashtra, India. My company name is Sri Ramakrishna Bioenergy LLP Company. Sir, my question is that we are listening to a lot of people in the market. I am doing this for 2 years. That from Nipir Gas, your bio-CFG plant will get 10% of your output. How much truth is this? Thank you. Sir, I am doing this. How true is that, that you can actually get the 10% output from your biogas plant if you make use of napier grass? Uh, Do you usually get the 10% output from your biogas plant? That's th the question. Thank you, thank you, Pavaji. Uh, actually, this is a, a big myth which is uh, being floated uh, uh, in India that you get a 10% output on a napier grass uh, based plant. Ideally, you get an output between 5 to 6%. Uh, based on the feed stock we are putting up. But this again, uh, since we already discussed uh, this plant, what we are setting up, at what the biogas plant is all about, it is a biochemical reaction, so we have to ensure the stability of the feed stock and we have to ensure the same quality of the feed stock is being fed so that we can obviously attain a, a stable number of the gas. But uh, uh, 5 to 6 percent is what uh, is easily achievable as a gas output from that deep grass. So I hope that answers your question कि आप पांच से छह परसेंट तक का output expect कर सकते हैं ten percent as sir said एक myth है also I would like to put forth that we also have one session plan with all our clients later as well so if you have any questions the media folks you're requested to please put it forth now because after that we will convene into the lunch so any questions please raise your hand. I believe uh, a lot of media folks have already asked their question during the one-on-one -on -one session that happened before. A call question hai. Ji sir, bataye. Meanwhile, others please be ready. Agar aapka koi bhi sawal hai related to biogas, related to bio CNG, renewable energy sources. Sir, my question is, uh, bio CPG plant mein hum jo RCC tank bana rahe bio digester mein. Aur maine suna tha ki MS powder coated mein bhi jo tank banega. उसमें से कितना डिफरेंस बिटवीन द कॉस्ट प्लीज टेल मी क्योंकि आरसीसी अपने आप में एक वैसे बहुत पोरस मटेरियल है बट यस बहुत सारी कंपनीज आरसीसी भी कर रही हम भी आरसीसी पे करते हैं कुछ अपने फायदे भी हैं नुकसान भी हैं रही बात कॉस्ट की तो एमएस और आरसीसी में 
लगभग पंद्रह परसेंट का डिफरेंस आता है कॉस्ट के अंदर नहीं आर चीज सस्ता है थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर द आंसर अगर कोई और सवाल है आपके तो प्लीज आप यस सर आई एम पास माइंड यू सर सो वॉट्स योर नेम प्लीज टेल द नेम ऑफ योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन माय नेम इज महेश कैलाश डुमरे फ्रॉम नेक्सन्स प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट सर्विसेज फ्रॉम औरंगाबाद सर मेरा सवाल ये था कि अभी सी के लिए गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से कुछ uh, हमने पॉलिसीज देखे थी उसमें कुछ अपडेशन या फिर कुछ उसमें और जैसे कि फंडिंग है सी ए का इसमें कुछ बढ़ोतरी हुआ है क्या क्योंकि इसका कुछ फिक्स ऐसा माइनस नहीं था जो हमने पहले मार्च के पहले देखे थे पहले थैंक यू महेश जी ये बहुत अच्छा क्वेश्चन है कि सबसे बड़ी दिक्कत बाया गैस प्लांट में फाइनेंशियल क्लोजर्स की है बैंक लोन्स की तो ये सब बहुत चैलेंजेस हैं इस इंडिया में और दो गवर्नमेंट इस पर बहुत ज़्यादा अग्रेसर थी बहुत सारे सजेशन गए गवर्नमेंट के पास एंड पहले ये दो करोड़ तक की लिमिट थी जो गवर्नमेंट अनसिक्योर्ड फंडिंग करती थी अभी इसको बढ़ा के फाइव करोड़ तक की कर दी है फर्स्ट ऑफ अप्रैल से सो so, इससे लोगों को काफ़ी हेल्प मिल रहा है फंडिंग में और कई बार ऐसा होता है कि दो फंडिंग हम और ज़्यादा अनसिक्योर ले सकते हैं बट डिपेंडिंग आपकी कंपनी की प्रोफाइल आपकी गुडविल कैसी है सिविल कैसा है तो वो सारे फैक्टर्स को ध्यान रखते हुए हम उससे दस करोड़ तक की भी अनसिक्योर फंडिंग कर सक ले सकते हैं रिक्वायरमेंट so what how, how much um, feedstock you have what is the volume of the tank what is the heat demand in the tank and then how much heat must be supplied but in any case the heat should not be higher than 70 degrees celsius otherwise you are generating damages on the microorganisms but also on your heating system regarding the question can we go in the park last year yes 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 फाइबरग्ला In each case, it should be possible. So, if fiberglass goes uh, cheaper or RCC goes? The fiberglass goes. Cheaper or uh, RCC goes? So, which is cheaper, fiberglass <coughs> or the RCC? RCC is cheaper. Yeah, RCC is cheaper. Yeah. RCC is cheaper. So, RCC is cheaper. Yeah. So, and so it's longer duty also, which is so. So, generally, we're working in our project with uh, reinforced concrete or with glass-fibered steel. Because with the fiberglass, you, in the most cases, you don't reach the required stability or um, the dimensions of the tanks. But this, of course, depends on the project. So, and uh, the prices highly depends on the country. And as Mr. Gupta just uh, mentioned, the RCC is a cheaper solution. And which lasts more longer, uh, fiberglass or RCC? Ah. That was your question. Yeah. So. Um, I would say the highest quality is a glass fused steel tank. So you have a guaranteed quality and no issues for the next 30 years. Um, concrete, if you coating the concrete, it comes also with a very high quality. And the fiber uh, um, fiberglass highly depends on the manufacturer of it. Perfect. Sir. Processing, private limited, Aurangabad. 
My question is, we are using full Napier grass to create compressed biogas or 90% Napier grass, 10% cow dung or another material or fully 100% Napier grass. So both is possible, of course. Uh, you can operate with 100% Napier grass. That's no issue at uh, no issue at all. But you are also able to mix it with cattle manure or other manures. On behalf of all the people, I congratulate Mr. Gupta because you have dared to start Napier plant in India. <laughs> you are going to import total plant 100% from Germany or doing some civil work from India. So, so, so th thank you for your congratulations, uh, but uh, uh, I would also uh, like you to include uh, Mr. Achal Thul for having trust on me, uh, because this would not have been possible without his, his trust on me. Uh, so, uh, what we are importing is that we are importing uh, uh, engineering designs uh, from Bioenergy Germany, the basis of which we are designing the plant. However, at the same time, uh, the civil work uh, at the site plant is done by uh, Gruner Renewable Energy. Apart from this, there are the key components which are required uh, to run the plant, such as agitators, uh, which are being imported from Germany. Then there are uh, certain other components which we are using the top class components, the best companies which are available in the world. However, uh, these companies already have their offices in India, the factories in India, like the compressors we are using from the Bodkart, which is a Switzerland based company, top company in the world. Uh, then we have uh, uh, the pump uh, which we are using the feed pumps and the transfer pumps which is uh, the niche in uh, germany we have again a factory uh, in goa uh, in india so they have four factories in the world and uh, so likewise uh, the most of the equipments are uh, uh, all the international standard equipment we are not using any local components and i also congratulate mr thul because he trusted you and he has taken the risk of starting this big project. So he yes. is the first in Maharashtra. Yes. So no, not in Maharashtra. Ah. In, in the India, he is the first. Ah, in India. Okay. So we all congratulate him also. And uh, let me tell this also. Because if no doubt this will be very successful. But if it is proved, there will be a green revolution, very big revolution. Because from last four years we have been studying uh, about this which material should be used, if we use agri waste, if we use uh, press mud, so there are so many risks, but from Napier grass, it is 100% uh, we can procure Napier grass and the project will be viable. So thank you yes. Mr. Gupta. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much thank you. sir. I'll pass the mic to you. Uh, hi, my name is Sachin. So I have a question regarding the upgradation front. So, because uh, in Europe and mostly on no, uh, US, the upgradation technology which they use as a membrane technology. So, coming to the Indian context and the no, uh, capex front, mostly we prefer no PSA system. So, what is your view in terms of no PSA and the membrane technology? Because people say uh, PSA has no more methane loss. So, how it is justifiable when we go with PSA? instead of, you know, uh, membrane technology. <coughs> so, he's saying that which technology is better? Be so, uh, for each project, uh, you, you have to check for each project if uh, what kind of uh, upgrading technology or purification technology is the best solution. And if you have a good PSA supplier and a good quality of the PSA, it's as good as a membrane technology an other way around. So generally we're going with a PSA for bigger projects and with membrane for smaller projects. But this also depends on the availability of both technologies in a country. So if we're doing uh, uh, something in the United States of America, there's a membrane technology is very common. So whereas if we are in Southeast Asia, the PSA is also very common, also for smaller projects. So here important is that ensure that the technology provider ensures to fit the uh, safety requirements and regulations of the uh, respective country. Perfect. Thank you so much, sir. We have one more question from here. Hello, sir. This is Shubham. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, 
first one is we are particularly talking about napier leaves right so uh, when we are speaking about the napier 100 uh, if you we if we use 100% of napier and if we use uh, 90% of napier and 10% of uh, cow dung as uh, sangeet sir said which one gives higher yield so uh, generally we using the total plant of napier grass not only the leaves because also in the stem there is a lot of energy in important is that the material will be chopped so then it's available for the microorganisms and if you add uh, or if you mix nappy grass and uh, cattle manure or cow dung um, the specific gas yield of nappy grass is uh, significantly higher compared to cattle manure and uh, one more thing uh, the current scenario is uh, If we see a six, uh, this this question is for Gupta sir. Uh, like uh, one year back, the CNG rate was higher. Right now, it is reducing a uh, bit by bit. Uh, in future, if this rate gets reduced uh, uh, further, then what will be the future of this project? Can we uh, do anything uh, futuristic thing uh, apart from CNG? So, uh, first thing, uh, the rates of CNG. Uh, All obviously rose because uh, again uh, Russian Ukraine war which happened, and uh, from first of April the rate have further reduced uh, with the change in the uh, policies of the government. Uh, having said that, uh, the rates of CNG in India uh, will not go uh, in any case below 80, uh, where we have this high rates. Uh, but uh, yes, our plants are totally ready uh, to get transformed uh, if we have a good demand of hydrogen. So uh, we just have to replace the purification system and use the electro electrolyzers, and we can convert our plant for hydrogen generation as well. Thank you. Thank you, Private Limited Gondia. My question is regarding the previous talk. We are talking about the napier, and uh, when we want to store it, so there is one process we call, uh, store it in anaerobic condition. We call it as a silage, and there are some. Uh, I think it is a process stage. Well, some acids are already being formed. So, will that silage will be uh, good for uh, our as a field stock, or it will have a, a, another impact? If we use a silage, it has already been there in a anaerobic condition for maybe a month or two or three months. It will be useful, or it will have some adverse effect. So, um, the two points we have to focus on: one is the energy content, yeah. and the energy content of the field stock. Will be higher if you feed the fresh material. Also, the ensiling process uh, will uh, during the ensiling process, the uh, nappy grass will lose some uh, yeah. amount of energy. Okay. So, and um, the ensiling process itself has no big benefits for the uh, biogas process, but it enables you to store the nappy grass for a longer period of time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I don't want to disappoint anyone. So one last question, very quickly, we are taking. <laughs> Sir, my question is: uh, Bio CNG and market में जो अभी crude gas CNG है, उसमें क्या difference है? Because अभी महाराष्ट्र में कुछ bio CNG plant set up किए हैं, उनका जो pressure maintain नहीं हो पा रहा है. तो ऐसा अपना bio CNG में results आएगा या तो vehicles को अच्छा pickup मिलेगा या नहीं मिलेगा? Pressure maintain हो पाएगा? and nahi ho payega that's my question so problem uh, is that uh, with the bio cng uh, 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 plants biogas plants is that the purity of the gas is not uh, basically achieved uh, whereas government has set a target of uh, standards basically of having a 90% above methane and uh, less than 4% with carbon dioxide so people used to follow uh, this standard uh, but uh, Uh, in bio CNG, uh, we have to maintain above 96 percent of the purity of the methane so that we don't have this problem. So for this, uh, even if uh, uh, like the Sanjay Khanne asked about the PSA, uh, so uh, we are improvising on the PSA systems. So what we at a as a company are setting up uh, with a full monitoring system. So we are not only monitoring our digesters, the gas which is being produced in our digesters, and the pH level and other factors we have, and other things. We are also monitoring uh, the gas which is sent to the operating system, how it is being purified, because there are certain materials inside the uh, uh, purification system which always are prone to wear and tear. 
So, uh, uh, so, so what happens is, is in the in the uh, upgrading system is that when the gas is sent to a upgrading system, so there is a lot of other gases as well, and there are molecules these which absorbs the gases. So uh, these are the pores wherein the gas passes through. So when we don't purify, uh, remove the sulfur before this or CO2 before uh, sending it to the PSA. So this is a big problem that uh, our pores get filled of the molecular steves and our gas just goes through the uh, PSA system and comes out without getting the purification. So we as a company, we are doing some modification with the PSA systems as well where we are putting certain checks, injection points where we can analyze the gas, the purity of the gas. Suppose uh, there is a desulfurization tank, the gas is going through this and uh, coming out with removal of uh, suppose X number of uh, uh, sulfur content. So we check it uh, whether the sulfur is getting increased. So if the sulfur is getting increased that means uh, that uh, the desulfurization tank uh, which is having in the iron uh, sponge has to be replaced. Uh, so this is what we as a company follow uh, the practice so that we uh, offer the best of the solution. Uh, with the available uh, equipments. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, with this, ladies and gentlemen, we are closing the house for questions. In case you have any further questions, please feel free to reach to us during our amazing networking session that is lined up right after this during the lunch. So, thank you, thank you so much, gentlemen, for answering all the questions and congratulations to you once again. So, you want to say something? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, while I have seen that a lot of people are having uh, queries on Nipia grass, uh, uh, so uh, post uh, lunch we are going to have an amazing session by uh, Dr. Rotman who will be taking you through uh, uh, the introduction of the Nipia grass, uh, how it is to be used uh, uh, as a feed stock and uh, as a bioenergy company is setting up the world's biggest plant in Malawi, Africa. Uh, which is a 6,000 tons per day input capacity plant. So you will also be getting the insight about that plant, how they are building that plant and what research have they done uh, to uh, get that contract, which is a very huge contract uh, for developing the plant. So uh, we will uh, uh, have, be having an exciting session post lunch. Uh, so I think uh, now since everyone is uh, quite hungry, uh, so let's move to the uh, uh, lunch area and have a good lunch and then please rejoin after the lunch session. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So as sir has already announced for an exciting...
and are all energized for the next session. You know, they say that usually whatever happens after lunch, it's a graveyard session because people tend to feel sleepy after they had their meal. So, in order to wake you all up, let's do something. So, please, khade ho jayege. Let's all stand up. Come on. Yes. Please bring your hands forward. Do a quick stretch. Yes. Let's feel it. Let's take it up. Fantastic. A stretch to your left, to your right. Let's see who is more flexible. Try taking it to the back. 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 Yes. Fantastic. Move your shoulders. Move your shoulders. Fabulous. This. Super. Now let's all settle now. Come on. Fantastic. So we are going to reveal that just now, right after this particular presentation. So I am sure nobody here wants to miss that. So please be seated. So without any further ado, please join me in welcoming back on stage Dr. Nils Rockman, CEO of Bioenergy Germany for Southeast Asia. Over to you, sir. Let's talk about an happy address. So we already had a lot of, uh, a lot of questions and uh, we want to give you an idea give you an idea how we get uh, suitable data as a, for a good database to design biogas plants, especially for nappy grass. So uh, at first, um, I will start with a sum up. Most of this information, the most of you probably know already. Nevertheless, please let me uh, sum up uh, what are the benefits and the uh, specification of the nappy grass. So why is nappy grass a uh, feedstock with a high potential? So at first, it's a fast growing, a growing perennial plant. So, Different to corn, for example, which has to be planted one time per harvest. Nappy grass you can plant one time and you can harvest it for the next 10 to 15 years without uh, required additional harvest uh, plantation. Further, nappy grass is very well adapted to subtropical and tropical climates. And it is adapted to a wide range of soils and also to, har to harsh weather conditions. For the harvesting cycles, it is recommended to go with up to four cycles. If you have less cycles, you lose energy. And if you have more cycles, then um, the material can be too, too dry. You can have too much lignin for the AD process. Further, the, um, or caused by the uh, fast growing plants and the four harvesting cycles per year, it is possible to get a very high uh, yield per uh, very high yield of the nappy grass per hectare per year, and this uh, is expected between 500 to 650 tons per hectare per year. And um, for the biogas yield, it is a bit lower than for uh, corn, on example. But for corn, we have one harvest per year. And for nappy grass, we have four harvests per year. It means um, if we assume, or if we calculate with the 500 to 650 tons per hectare per year, um, and a specific gas yield of 420 non cubic meter not cubic meter per ton or genetic dry matter, we get between 50,000 to 78,000 non cubic meter of biogas per hectare per year, which is much, much higher than for corn or each other uh, energy crop. Further benefit is that nappy grass can be stored. This topic we had also in the uh, question round before about the uh, in silage process of the nappy grass. This is focused on the gas production process, but the biogas plant, especially based on nappy grass, has socio-economic benefits. So, um, in the first step, it's a big benefit for the farmer. In the most cases, um, the, 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 
poor farmers and they can generate a new source of regular income. And um, of course also the society and the nation uh, reduces the reliability, uh, increases the, sorry, reduces the reliance uh, of the import uh, of, uh, of, of, of fossil fuels like gas from other countries. And of course there is an environmental uh, impact, the uh, production of renewable energy reduces the dependency on fossil fuels of course. And the residues, the byproduct from the biogas plant, you can use as a fertilizer on the fields where the nappy grass were produced before. So it's nearly a perfect cycle. But how to get uh, all this data? So the most important data for us as a plant designer and for the engineer is the, uh, besides the characteristic of the feedstock, so dry matter, organic dry matter, maybe COD, nitrogen content, is the, um, is the gas yield test. So to get the specific gas yield for a feedstock. And here is a schedule how we generate or how we ensure to get uh, uh, yeah, to get this data. So at first we have to write the shoot, but we have to choose the right method to get the analyzer, to get the specific gas yield. One option is to take a reference amount from the literature. This is for the very very first estimation probably a good way, but um, different species of grass have dis different uh, results, different. Uh, locations lead to different results and if you take a value from the literature you do not know where they get uh, this source the numbers from. So if it's a real gas yield test it's also an assumption so this is only a way for the first very rough estimation. Second option is a calculation by Passerga. This is uh, an option to calculate based on lignin, hemicellular, starch content and so on. This is suitable if you have a lot of experience with the nappy grass already and you only want to have a quick estimation based on your experience over the last uh, amount of years. So, in this case, it's also not the right way. The right way would be a real gas yield test. So take a sample and digest it. And then there are, two, uh, there are different uh, methods you can use to do this. Um, we saw in the past that some institutes using a gas yield test, normally used for wastewater plants, um, but this is not the right method for a solid material like nappy grass and leads to wrong results. So the only uh, right method is an international standard called VDI 4630. There it's uh, exactly described how the uh, samples will be analyzed to be comparable with other feedstocks. So, then we have the right method, it's a batch test, so it's a real digestion, but as a batch, batch test. And now to ensure that we're talking about representative values of the results. So, all samples we analyze in our laboratory, we send it also to an um, independent laboratory in Germany, who are spe specialized on gas yield tests for biogas feedstocks. And, um, they analyzed the same samples without to know what sample it is. Before we talk about the results of the gas yield tests, um, here we want to show how we took the samples uh, on some of our fields in, in Thailand. Um, for the most samples, we're working together with the Nankong Lapchazina Animal Nutrition Research and Development Center. Um, they have different nappy grass species on their fields and they are grown there under controlled conditions. So we know exactly the, uh, how much they fertilize, what is the species, how long is the um, harvesting cycle. Then we took the samples, we chopped it, put it uh, in a vacuum bag and frozen uh, the samples by minus 20 degrees before we send it to the laboratory.
So here are some more pictures. Uh, this are the snappy grass after 90 days. And um, here it was harvested. This is a picture of the harvested leaves and stems. Then we chop it, vacuumize it, and here we had a number of uh, maybe 30 samples we took, and some of them we analyzed, and some of them we stored uh, to ensure we can repeat the analysis of stunting red frog. A uh, short sum up for the analysis we carried out during the last four years. All in all, we took more than 40 different samples. And yet during the last four years, and we carried out more than 60 gas yield tests. 20 uh, of the gas yield tests were carried out in mesophilic conditions, and 40 were uh, carried out in thermophilic conditions. Further, we carried out tests with samples after 60, 90, and 120 days. And um, we compared the results from our laboratory with the results um, we got from an external laboratory and the differences between our results to the results from the independent institute were only 0.7%. So it means that, uh, that the results were analyzed very accurately. So this is a, a laboratory in Germany. Um, they carried out the batch tests here, and they also carried out some continuously tests, but they are not topic of the meeting today, of the session today. Um, anyway, the results don't differ a lot from the batch tests. Uh, this page uh, I uh, mentioned to you a few, uh, few hours ago. Here we carried out the gas yield test for a nappy grass called Kiosia or also Sufanagu, that are two trade names. And we uh, got a gas yield for the fresh material of 128 cubic meter per ton. And this means 450 cubic meter per ton organic dry matter. Based on a um, on a certain um, um, uh, dry matter content. If the dry matter content differs, of course, this 128 ton uh, cubic meter per ton organic dry matter, uh, fresh matter, differs also. We analyzed also the methane content. In this case, it was a thermophilic test, so we had 54% methane, and the H2S content was below 200 ppm. This is how uh, the figures looks when we take, uh, when we analyze or when we carry out a gas yield test. You have uh, one curve with uh, uh, average methane content and three curves with the real gas production, the cumulative gas production. So sometimes it's different a bit. In one sample, the gas production is a bit faster. Uh, in another sample, you need two more days to get the same level. But after a certain period of time, uh, all samples will reach the same uh, output. And we get an interesting uh, figure like this, where we can see how much gas is produced after how many days. This is not so important for the plant owner and operator. You want to know uh, what is the maximum gas yield. But for the plant designer, of course, it's interesting uh, how to design the plant to, to handle the peaks at the beginning of the gas production. Okay, this is uh, the sum up how we get the data for nappier grass to, uh, to build up or to carry out a, a reliable uh, biogas plant design without any assumptions, only, uh, any guessing, so really on hard facts this is, a, 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 this is required to have a good plant design and later a good operating biogas plant with high efficiency. And this is also the same way how we prepared us to design our biogas plant in Malawi. These are the numbers I would like to share with you now. 
So at the beginning of this year, we signed the contract for the project in Malawi. It is based to, uh, on 100% napier grass. And um, as far as we know, it is the biggest biogas plant in the world. And we are producing 56 megawatt um, of, uh, of power. So it's not for CNG, it's for power production. And then the power will be fed into the public grid. Um, the location is in Malawi. Feedstock is a napier grass. Technology is a CSTR, same as uh, we talked about here already. And output is power production as a fertilizer. To give an idea where Malawi is located, this is the, the south of Africa. Here is the Malawi Sea, and right next to the Malawi Sea is Malawi. And in this area of Malawi is the area where the plant and the plant fields are located. Some key, number, uh, key numbers for the plant. So the plant will consume every day 5,400 tons of napier grass. This is produced on an uh, established so-called mega farm with 3,800 hectare. And the biogas plant consists of 28 CSTRs, so digester. All in all, we have a reactor volume of 345,000 cubic meters. And the biogas plant will produce 24,800 cubic meters per hour. It means uh, 200, roughly 280 million cubic meters per year. Further, the plant consists of uh, seven external gas holders and 28 tank mounted gas holders to ensure that the gas can be stored and the plant can be operated continuously on a, a smooth level without fluctuation. In total, we have more than uh, 375,000 uh, cubic meter of gas storage in the plant. The plant consists further uh, out of 24 CHPs. Each CHP um, has a capacity of 2.5 megawatt from MTU. And uh, all in all, at the plant, 60 megawatt CHP capacity are installed. The plant design is carried out for 56 megawatt. Six of this will be used for the own power consumption of the plant. And 50 megawatt will be sold to the uh, grid. It means 438,000 megawatt per year. This is a core business of the biogas plant. But besides, uh, the plant also come up with some byproducts. Every day we have 200,000, uh, 2,880 cubic meter of liquid fertilizer. This will be used in the fields around the biogas plant um, to irrigate and to fertilize the closed fields. Further, the plant has uh, comes up with 1,750 tons of solid fertilizer every day. This fertilizer will be used on the fields a bit far away from the plant and it will be sold as a byproduct to farmers uh, in some distance to the plant. On the one hand, the plant is a great uh, project to produce renewable energy and to have a feasible uh, a project but it comes with some uh, social economic effects also. We will, with the construction of the biogas plant and especially the operation of the biogas plant and the cultivation and harvesting of the napier grass, uh, more than 1,000 new, new jobs will be created for the cultivation and farming and the transportation of napier grass. These jobs are mainly for non-skilled and low-skilled employees. Further, 50 new jobs will be uh, generated for the operation of the biogas plant. These are medium and high-skilled uh, jobs. 
and more than 30 new jobs are generated for uh, the service of maintenance, the biological maintenance, and the management of the plant. The plant will be built somewhere in nowhere, so there are no villages around. Around the plant is only this mega farm, and to ensure that the uh, uh, employees uh, has a uh, has a possibility to live there, a small village will be erected. And this, of course, with a respective infrastructure like with schools, hospitals, water and power supply. And this is a plant layout of the biogas plant to give you a rough idea. So, um, from so, so the plant layout has a width of 200 uh, of 920 meters and is around about 310 meter high. It means the total plant will be built on an area of 28 hectares. And this is a standard block. On the next page, I will explain it more detailed. Yeah, so this, yeah, and, and um, here we have the entry for the for the trucks to deliver the material, and um, here is the entry and the exit for the tanks, for the trucks, um, coming to pick up the liquid fertilizer and here the solid fertilizer. This is a bit more detailed. Um, we have two types of blocks. The standard block is this one. We call it block A to block E. Um, consisting of five digesters operated under thermophilic conditions, uh, a dehumidifier to dry the gas, activated carbon to remove any uh, H2S, then we have a liquid solid separation, and the liquid will be pumped to the storage pond, pond and the solids will be picked up by truck. The gas will be transported to an external gas holder, and from here it will be transported to the CHPs uh, installed in a separate CHP building. Each of this block will, is able to produce um, 10 megawatt. And we have this block, we call it block Z, the block uh, producing the power for the own consumption of the plant only and is not connected to the public. Here we have three tanks and uh, this block is able to produce up to 6 megawatt. The CHP capacity is installed with 10 megawatt. So in the rare case, we need more than 6 megawatt. The stored gas can be used to cover this fluctuation and we can increase the power production to up to 10 megawatt. Further, for the plant, we took care that we use standardized machines to reduce the maintenance and the service costs. Besides the, um, the, the, the installation and the engineering of the plant, as an uh, EPC company, um, Bioenergy Germany also take over the 24-7 monitoring. The plant will be connected to our monitoring room and uh, we support the operator on-site uh, to ensure that the plant works on a top level the whole year. Additionally, we are establishing a, a service company in Malawi, um, Bioenergy Germany Malawi Service Center, and this service center also includes the, uh, or provides the service and maintenance for the total biogas plant and all of its components, as well as the service and maintenance for the harvesting equipment. And together with a partner who will join this uh, service center, we provide the service of maintenance for the CHP. This is generally not our scope. Uh, we are not the experts for the CHP, but together with our partner, we can offer the service. Additionally, we will have a laboratory there to carry out the uh, biological service of maintenance. And uh, we are uh, offering a plant operation support service. So the operator can contact us every time uh, at the day and each day at the year uh, if you have any issues. 
So this project is uh, very famous in the, the area of the, south, uh, of the south of Africa and was already several times topic of high rank discussions and um, as a consequence of the implementation of this project we already got following projects um, projects uh, which, which came up um, on example in uh, Eswatini not far away from Malawi it's a 34 megawatt project with Nepiagrass and also Uganda requested now a project for 34 megawatt and um, from South Africa we got the request, in this case from private companies, for a 6, uh, six megawatt Napiagrass plant uh, in combination with their wind and solar parks. So here we have uh, they asked, uh, requested to implement their already existing power production into our biogas plant to compensate the fluctuations. It means during the daytime we are reducing the power production uh, from our CHPs, we store the gas, okay. and in the night time, when the solar power drops down, then we uh, start more CHP and consuming the power also produced, uh, consuming the gas also produced during the day. And uh, one more project in the south of Africa, South Africa was requested for uh, 11 megawatt biogas plants. The plants in Africa. South Africa are focused to provide the power to uh, gated communities um, and uh, for private demand. In Eswatini and Uganda, that are projects uh, to feed in the uh, produced power into the public. So this is a, was a very short sum up on the one hand about the Nepigress, the numbers we can expect on the one hand, on the other hand, the real project just under uh, installation and establishing in uh, Malawi. And we expect that the start of construction of Mal in Malawi is in the uh, beginning of the next year. And then after one and a half year, this huge biogas plant will be finished and in operation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rockman. So I hope that now you all must have got a better clarity on Napier Dras. Shad se aapke questions thode aur zada solve hoye, thode aur clarity mili ho. So if you still have any doubts, uh, we are going to do a one-on-one -on -one networking session. So what's going to happen is uh, we all will be proceeding towards the meeting room. Agar aapke kuch sawal hai, to please aap hume bata dijiye. And we are going to write your name on a piece of paper. And one by one, we all are going to go in a meeting room and we are going to have like a really good and a detailed discussion. So all those people who want to be a part of that networking, please let me know. Please raise your hand. for the networking if you have your questions. Fantastic. I'm just coming and you... Okay. So all those people who want to go for the one-on-one -on -one networking, please raise your hands. One more time. So what's your name? Mayank Agrawal. Fantastic. Uh, who else is next? Siddharth. What is Okay. Who is going next? Sachin Dharani. Sachin Dharani. Sachin? Dharani. Dharani. Okay. Yes, sir? Shubham Awari. Okay. Okay. Who is next? Yeah, I've written your name. Who is next? Mahindra Kapu. Okay. Next one, please. Mandeep Mehra. Sure. Wow. And I will be calling.
calling you one by one for the networking session. Meanwhile, uh, thank you so much once again for joining us here. Rest of the people, please do not leave as of now. We have some tea and coffee being served for you uh, right outside in the lunch area where the lunch was being served. The tea is right there as well. And in case you have any question that you would like to ask Dr. Rotman as of now, please feel free to do so. If you have a Dr. Rotman in particular question, hai, uh, if you want to ask them, please ever push them. The rest one-on-one networking is definitely going to happen. Mr. Ukarsh is going to be there as well. So, anybody? Madam, you can ask them. Yeah. Yeah. The question is uh, that how much megawatt of electricity will be produced with what amount of biogas? Is that the right question? Okay. Suppose I have to produce one megawatt. To produce one megawatt per hour, you need round about 100 ton per day. So this depends, of course, a bit on the quality on the nappy grass, but this is a rough number. Because whether uh, biogas used for vehicle or biogas used for electricity, which is better? This depends on the model of your of, of your uh, uh, business. Yeah, so in this case, for example, in Malawi, uh, we cannot sell the gas directly, but there's a huge demand of power. Only 9 to 11 percent of the people in Malawi have uh, a power connection. So they, they need this power. And they have to shut down the power in the big cities for 10 to 12 hours per day because they don't have enough power. So there is a huge demand. Uh, in Malawi, we have the situation that there is a water power uh, uh, plant, and this plant was built 30 years ago. And uh, till last year, or till the last years, they produced two, uh, two billion watts, two million, two million, uh, two, two billion watts per year. And uh, this this plant is not working because uh, it was not serviced. It was not, uh, uh, had no service. Had no had no. Uh, uh, the system to care about it, and it's still uh, most time off. So uh, with this uh, 400,000 uh, kilowatt we produce per year, we fulfill more than 20 percent of the country power consumption. So it's very important for Malawi to get this uh, plant. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Simon and Dr. Rockman. Yes, sir. Very quickly, you can have like a few questions. Sir, uh, how are you collaborated with uh, um, Brunner Energy? Because uh, are you giving, uh, are, you, are, you, are you providing design or are you providing total machinery to Brunner? Yeah. Uh, we're providing the engineering and the uh, support for the plant design to Brunner. Okay, so I can say uh, you are providing only design, not machinery. That's correct. So who will provide the machinery then? Um, so we recommend uh, some companies. Where we, um, these companies are very well known in the biogas market and coming up with high quality machinery. One example for the pumps, um, it's company Nage, one example. They are also, I guess they have a factory here in India, um, but there are also other very uh, reliable companies, one example for agitators, uh, company Suma, uh, on the one hand, they are our competitors, in the case if we're selling by, um, agitators too, but frankly speaking, they have very good products, and uh, I know that Mr. Gupta also likes to use this uh, agitators. Okay. And the uh, IPOGI system which you showed us, uh, are you providing it uh, along with all those machinery which, are you, uh, which you are re recommending to us? How, how the IPOGI system is implemented on? the machinery which are purchased from other market. Uh, what do you mean, sorry? I meant uh, you have implemented a system called IcoZ, right? Okay, yes. Right? Uh, the the IcoZ uh, we are using for the plants we build by ourselves. Uh, Mr. Gupta and Gruner, they have an own system. Um, also um, uh, for the um, monitoring and operation and controlling of the plant. This is not the one we developed for us, but uh, this is the one which is adapted to the local requirements. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, okay. Well, a lot of.
questions. Dr. Rafa, can you please uh, hold this, I think, for uh, quite a while? And uh, yes, please ask your question. Uh, I have two questions. So one question is the type of uh, grass which we need to use. Because in your presentation you have mentioned two types. Q-seam that is one and second one is a pack chong one. So in context which which one is better? That is my first question. And second question, in your slide you have mentioned for uh, 20 meter cube of gas on odium per ton. So oh, what is the best harvesting cycle for time for getting that for 20 and what is the best uh, that organic matter which we get on that particular harvesting cycle. So, uh, in our experience, the best harvesting cycle for napier grass are 90 days, plus minus a few days. Yeah, sometimes it's not possible to harvest in exactly after 90 days. It's no issue to harvest after 95 or 85. So, but 90 days shows the best results of uh, numbers of harvesting cycles on the one hand, and on the other hand, the um, the yield per hectare and the dry matter and organic dry matter in the napier grass. So between um, 60 days and 90 days there is a big jump uh, in the accumulation of uh, dry matter content. And after this 90 days the plant, the napier grass starts to produce more lignin to get a stronger stem and this lignin cannot be decomposed in the biogas process. So, so it means there is a trade-off between the ODM and the lignin. So, so we need to choose uh, organic matter, right? So, so it is 90 days or it's uh, 75 days then? So coming between 60 to 90 days. So uh, 90 days is a good number. See, by, uh, if you have uh, 60 days, the lignin content is a bit lower, but the dry matter content is much, much lower. So, uh, and we have to harvest uh, uh, more, uh, more often. Mm -hmm which needs more, uh, more, more stuff and more uh, gasoline and so on. So uh, in our experience, 90 days is the right way. And in regard to your other question, um, the, the nappy grass I mentioned here, it's uh, two times the same. Uh, in Thailand, they use two different names for it. The one is a Kio Siam, the other is Sufana Bu. So it is one species. But of course, there are also other species in the market, for example, like Pak Shong Wan. So uh, there can be small differences between the different species also. And I'm quite sure in India, you also will have another species which is more adapted to the soils in India and maybe also in the different regions, different species. Thank you. It's given almost an entire day to us to be here, to be a part of the ceremony and to embark on a journey together for the greener and a more sustainable future. So I would request you to please conclude the ceremony. Uh, thank you, Namrata. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, uh, for sparing a day for us. Uh, I think uh, you all had a good time uh, and good uh, uh, knowledge sharing from Bangladesh uh, uh, directly. Uh, so why uh, the session was uh, kept uh, uh, was that a lot of uh, questions are there uh, related to Nepal grass as a field stop. But uh, I believe uh, most of your questions are answered from uh, directly the experts uh, uh, from Germany, uh, who are our partners basically. And uh, I believe uh, it will, uh, uh, you, once you will go out from here, you will uh, be having a good knowledge uh, about the nepe grass as a feed stock and your misconceptions about uh, nepe grass as a feed stock would have been gone by now. So I once again thank you, thank you everyone for uh, uh, sparing time for us and I really appreciate uh, Dr. Rotman, uh, Mr. Dirk and Mr. Matthias to be here uh, with us in India and uh, to help uh, our uh, clients uh, 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 get a good knowledge and we look forward to have a good uh, partnership together and do a good business uh, and uh, now like uh, Namrata just to conclude and uh, uh, then you all can have a, a tea and coffee uh, there will be session for this and uh, uh, post that we will be having a one on one discussion uh, uh, separately in a meeting room uh, so uh, so that uh, does everyone is not getting confused by uh, other, what other person is saying so this is the idea of uh, this session so that uh, you guys can meet us uh, directly uh, 
uh, and discuss your uh, queries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So with this, thank you so much once again, everybody, for being a part of today's session. We hope that you all had a very insightful and a fruitful day. Aapke bahut saare queries the, bahut saare questions the, be it on Napier grass, be it on the yield. And we truly hope that you have now found a better clarity, a better answer to your questions. And if you still have any doubts, any clarifications that you want to get from our side, there is a one-on-one -on -one networking, as Sir mentioned, which is aligned right after this. So, but before that, we have the tea and coffee arranged for you. Please do join us for that. And post that, we'll call you for the one-on-one -on -one networking. Thank you. Thank you so much once again, everybody. This is your host, Navrata, signing off. Thank you.